All right, so here we are in Substance Paint, and this time I'm gonna show you guys how to make stitches and just a few ways to actually do them and achieve them within Substance Painter. So first, what we're gonna do is go on over to our belt. In this case, I'm gonna do it on my belt here. So I'm gonna create a new folder. Okay, put that in the belt, and I wanna make sure we call the stitches. Okay, and what we're gonna do next is create a layer. Okay, so not a full layer, but a layer. Okay, and we're gonna call those stitches as well. Okay, or stitches. And what I want to do here is type in stitches because we do want to make use of those and come on over here, right? So we'll have these stitches, okay? And you'll notice there's a few of them, but I'm going to use these ones first, okay? The one with the dynamic stroke compatible. So what dynamic stroke compatible means is that the strokes are just stamped according to specific parameters kind of laid out by the program. In this case, the stitches follow one path regardless of how your stroke moves. What that means is if I lay down a stroke, the path will follow dynamically like this, as opposed to this. Okay, so here there are a few settings we can change. We can right click and mess with these settings here. So like this, okay, or we can do it down here, but right clicking is kind of easier. So size, we'll just control the size of your brush. In other words, if I hold on control and right click and drag, this is the size that it's controlling. Okay, so not the size of the stitches, but the size of the actual brush. Okay, so that there is fair enough and that's a pretty good size maybe a little bit lower so something like that is good enough next if you right click we notice that we have flow and stroke opacity so the thing with flow and stroke opacity they're kind of uh, similar but so stroke opacity is just the transparency of something if i click and drag it won't add any more to it but i have to let go of my pen and then press down again to continuously add to that the thing with flow is that if I draw, as soon as I continue drawing over and over and over, as long as I'm drawing over that, kind of like with a pencil in reality, it'll keep adding to it. So stroke capacity, you have to go over a few times, let go of your pen and actually go over. With the flow, you can just keep going and it'll keep adding to it. So flow is kind of like the rate at which the strokes are added and stroke capacity is just the transparency. In this case, we don't need to mess with any of those settings because they, uh, they'll kind of mess with what we're doing. So there's no need to do that angle as well okay how far the angle of this is going so if i move the angle here you'll notice that my my cursor is now angled but that doesn't work well with any of these brushes so we'll leave it at zero okay and as for the jitter the size flow and angle jitter they do add a little bit of variation but the position jitter that really knocks it okay so if i do something like even a 10 for example you notice it does mess up what i'm kind of doing there right so it adds a little bit of variation in this case we don't really need that so i'm going to keep that at zero so alignment and the size space, basically like where are we drawing? So in this case, I'm drawing on the object, so I would like to keep that that way. If I was using the viewport or the texture, so for example, if I press F1, if I was drawing on this, I would probably go to texture space and I would use UV instead. But in this case, I'm drawing in 3D, so I'll keep it on tangent wrap and object. Okay, so alpha, this is the alpha that we're using. As you can see, it's a square rectangular alpha, so that's fine. We don't need to change that. If you want to, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, as for the slice width, um, this will just control the alpha slicing. So if I pull this all the way up, you'll notice it's getting a little bit higher, okay? And now it's covering the whole thing. So if I do this, okay, so if I do this, you notice it's <laughs> quite a big box there and that kind of distracts. So we'll keep it kind of, you know, where it was. I think it was 0.2. Just leave it at the defaults. Uh, slice contrast, again, they'll just add the contrast. We don't really need any of those things. Okay, advanced blending, again, not something we need. Okay, so here, do we want to add color to this object? In this case, yes, I do want color. We don't actually need metallic because these are just stitches. Uh, roughness, we can add a little bit of roughness to that. And the normal, we'll have the normal, okay, because we do want normal information, okay, the height information. The results are height information. In this case, we don't need it. But if we put it on, we'll see it later on what that does. So, okay, so next we've got base color. This obviously will change the color of the stitches, okay. Okay, we also have stitch selection. So we've got a few of these and you'll notice it here on top, right? We've got running left and double stitches, right? Stuff like that. So these are just different variations. So if we do that, you'll now notice, right? We've got things like that. We also have the thick threads. Okay, so we've got thin threads, twisted threads. Okay, rigid, right? Clips, stuff like that. And I like to keep it on thin. And in this case, I'll leave it on thick. Uh, puncture intensity will deal with the how intense the actual stitch is so if you pull it all the way up right it's got quite a bit of a a normal right information around that but i like to keep it just high ish seam intensity again will deal with the seam okay and if we put it all the way to zero you'll notice we don't have a seam but i do like this on one okay and all of these here these attributes i don't really mess with any of these all right dynamic stroke i don't need to worry about any of this stuff this is kind of a uh, crazy things that we don't really need to pay attention to 
Okay, next we've got advanced parameters. So here we've got the stitch size length. Okay, and that there will obviously mess with the length. This will mess with the width. And I like to bring that down a little bit. And the depth, of course, right? So I like to keep that all the way up. Next, we've got double stitches, which doesn't mean what you think it means. If you switch it on, it just doubles, right, what you have. So that's not what I want. And if we go to technical parameters, okay, we also have, again, we've got normal intensity, so we can pump that up if we so wish. And we've got height range. This won't do anything because we haven't switched on the height. Okay, so we switch that on, the height range will affect that. But in this case, we don't need that. And of course, ambient occlusion, right, all the way up, all the way down. And I kind of like to bump this up. Okay, and there we go. So that is pretty much it. So once you're done with that, you can actually create your stitches. Okay, and there they are. And if you think that, you know, some of these settings like later on, right, like the normal map, for example, is a bit much, what you can do is go down to base color and then go to height, right, and then change that. Sorry, the normal, not the height. So normal map, okay, and then we can change this down from, from 100 to, you know, something less. And notice it will affect that. So yeah, those are the things. And you can't change the color after you've laid it down. So once this is there, that's it. You can't change it after that. Uh, so make sure that you've got the right size, right? The right um, stitch selection, you know, stuff like that. And that'll just help you out. Another thing you can do is if you're having trouble, right? Uh, so let's say some of these curved areas here, but you're kind of getting a little bit jittery on your hand there. What you can do is switch on, I'm um, kind of lazy mouse. Okay, so switch that on, bring the distance down. Okay, and you see there's a little bit of a circle there and now it'll kind of, it's a little bit of a smoother transition okay and that's what that does so that there is pretty helpful so yeah that's the first brush that we have next up we have the um the simple ones okay okay and for those of you wondering you know what about these brushes over here so they're the exact same ones they just have different patterns that you can use so again same thing right size flow opacity jitter alpha right all of those things um but instead of that right we can go to the advanced parameters right same thing in technical parameters and we can change again like so for stitch selection we can change it from cross to cross diagonal cross straight right bosnian right all that type of stuff so that one's a little bit more complicated and of course you've got this one which is even more complicated right you've got spiral threads right stuff like that so the exact same thing just a little bit more complex as you go so simple sort of medium and that's like complex so yeah that is pretty much the only difference there's nothing else really right and now that you know how these settings work you can pretty much mess around with them because you already know what they do and kind of how to go about doing them all right, so up next we have the simple stitches. So let's select them. Okay, and let's go to another new folder. We'll just call this simple. Okay, and then we're going to create a full layer this time, not a layer. Okay, so full layer. We're going to right click. We're going to say add a black mask. Okay, and on the black mask, we're going to right click and say add paint. Okay, and then here we have it. So again, you know, we've got a bunch of these settings here. I'm not going to go through all of them because again, size, we'll just control the size, the flow and opacity. So the spacing is just how close or how far these stitches are. Okay, so that's actually pretty useful. The angle, again, and the jitter, we know all of that. So that's fine. Alignment and size space, again, we went through that. So attributes, dynamic strokes, don't really need to worry too much about that. But the parameters, we do need to worry about that because the stitch type, we've got cross, line, and zigzag. Again, right with cross, right, you can kind of imagine what that does. Okay, and with line, which is probably going to be the one we're going to be using. Uh, one thing you can do is change the count to two so now we've got double stitches which is great and again we can change the spacing here right and that as you can see from the preview right it's changing just how far apart the um, count is or the spacing between the two lines are so again right, you can play around with that the scale y and scale x will just control how thick these lines are okay and according to the x and y axis and stripes opacity um you can't really see it on the line, so I'll go to zigzag and I'll change the zigzag stripes opacity. So right now it's zero, so you don't really see anything. Let me just make that bigger. If I go all the way up, okay, you'll notice now there's a little bit of like that stripes that you get on string, right, or on stitches, and it kind of shows through. So like that, which is actually pretty useful in case you want that. So again, we'll go to line and we can uh, pull that all the way up if we want to. And again, go back to line and there you go, right? So something like that. You can kind of see it there. So that is pretty useful. But again, if you get pretty small, you don't really see it too much. And in case you're wondering why everything's so blurry, that's because I'm on 2K, um, right? When I'm rendering this, it'll be at 4K, but I don't want to view this in 4K because it's a bit taxing on my GPU. So that's the only reason there. Okay, but now that we're here on this, so why would we use this over this? So one, you can change things like the color, right? So we can go here to the full and come all the way down and we can actually change the color on the fly so let's choose something 
right like that and we can change this anytime we want right with these stitches with these dynamic stitches uh, we can't really do that okay so with these ones we can and also something that we can do um so i don't want any metallic no roughness the normal and high to fine so what i can do is over here it's right i can actually mess with the height all right so i can continue doing this and again i can come down and do this at any at any point okay so that is pretty useful so let me just rename this here to stitch okay and i always forget the t for some reason so that is one thing we can do another thing we can do is we can say Control d to duplicate this and we can call this i'm just going to call this blur for now and we don't need anything like so we don't need the color information okay we don't need that we do need the height information so under this one here and then i want to go to add a filter okay and then on the filter i'm going to click on that and then say type in blur okay and then we will get a blur so click on that the blur intensity we'll leave it at where it is okay you can't really see the difference here but we'll just leave it at where it was like i said so round about there Okay, and after you're done with that, we can go to the actual full layer, right, on the blur layer, and then we can come to the height, and then move the height down, so now it's being pushed in. Okay, and then back to the blur, we can select that, and we can go to blur intensity, and you can, as you can see, right, it's like either really, right, kind of crisp, or it fades out. So, around about here is pretty, and again, you can kind of experiment where you want it, but between these numbers here, right, so 0.3 and then point, point 0.5, right, that's kind of where you want it, so around about there, Again, we'll go to this and then we can bring the height down or up, right, whatever we want. So maybe about there. Okay, and then back onto the stitches, we can go to this height and bring it up a little bit to there, right. And again, right, those are the two ways to create stitches. And right, with this one, you can change the color, right, you can change a bunch of things after the, after the fact, right. With the first one I showed you, you can't really change all those things, but there's so many factors and parameters that you can change and add and customize that it's kind of worth it to use that one as well. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want. And again, right, using layers, using full layers, and just kind of see what you like. Uh, but yeah, those are the two ways that I know of, and they're pretty useful. And as you can see, I've used them throughout the model here. So here with the jacket, right, here with the buttons, for example, right, on the coat, on the jacket, on the pants. I don't really like these ones because I'll probably redo them, they're, they're a bit much. But yeah, quite a lot of uh, right, flexibility with some of these stitches. and. The important thing is that you can't change a lot of things after, which does suck, like the color here, for example, but I think it might be something they update later, hopefully. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this one.